Hi, it's Dr. Eric Ballcabbage, and we're back for another segment of Methylation Monday. Today, we're going to talk, continue our discussion on histamine and histamine intolerance. So, we talked last time about what histamine and histamine intolerance is, and we said that histamine intolerance is simply just an overproduction of histamine, more than the body can handle, and it creates a number of symptoms. And we said those symptoms could affect the central nervous system, and you could have dizziness and vertigo and headaches and migraines. It can impact the skin, so we, the patient can have itchiness and hives and allergic type reactions. They can have asthma. They could have exercise-induced asthma. They could have GI symptomatology. They could have brain fog, fatigue. There's any number of symptoms excess histamine production can cause. So let's talk a little bit more about what really causes the excess of histamine. It really comes down to two factors. One, there's either overproduction of histamine, or two, the patient has a reduced ability to degrade histamine. So let's talk about the overproduction factors. One of those is ex ex we get histamine from two sources. One, exogenous, so sources from outside the body, and the other from endogenous sources, those from inside the body. So the exogenous sources could be foods. Any foods that have higher levels of histidine, histamine, or produce or cause the release of histamine uh, by the body would be things that, we, that may provoke a, a response. Alcohol can trigger increased histamine release and medications can trigger increased histamine release. Endogenous sources, allergens, mastocytosis, bacteria, GI bleeds, and high levels of biogenic amines like putrescine could stimulate an excessive production of histamine. What would cause reduced ability to break it down? Well, there's two primary enzymes that are associated with the breakdown of histamine. One is called DAO, diamine oxidase, and the other is called HNMT, histamine and methyl transferase. Uh, if you have decreased production of those two enzymes, then you can have a buildup of histamine or a reduced breakdown of histamine. Reduced DAO production could be caused by genetics like a SNP or epigenetics affecting the enzyme. It could also be caused by factors like leaky gut. Leaky gut, a lot of the uh, DAO is produ produced in the intestines and so if a patient had leaky gut they may have some damage to the intestinal lining which may affect their DAO production. HNMT could also be caused by genetic factors and epigenetic factors, decreasing the function and the production of the HNMT enzyme. They could also have some other factors uh, like compromised methylation that may impact the ability of that HNMT enzyme to work. They could have competitive inhibition of DAO. So there could be other things like high levels of uh, biogenic amines in the body that are competing for the DAO. If you have high levels of, of things like putrescine and cadaverine in the body, that DAO needs to go to breaking those things down instead of histamine, they can have an elevated levels of histamine just because they have decreased levels of DAO around because it's busy doing other things. They can also uh, have reduced ability to break down histamine because there are medications that they're taking that are actually inhibiting DAO's ability to work, causing the histamine levels to rise. So let's summarize that. Histamine intolerance is really caused by one of two things, either an overproduction of histamine or an inability to break it down, or more likely a combination of both of those things the things that can cause overproduction, exogenous things could be food, alcohol, and medication. Endogenous things could be things like allergies, mastocytosis, bacteria, GI bleeds, high levels of other biogenic amines. And the reduced degradation could be caused by reduced function of DAO, reduced function of HNMT. It can also be caused by competitive inhibition of DAO by other substances that need it to be broken down and lastly by DAO blocking medications. So that's all for this Methylation Monday segment. I look forward to uh, having another one ready for you next week. Take care.